All right, so today we're going to talk about nomenclature and more specifically the naming of inorganic compounds. Um, this is a concept that is very difficult or tends to give students a lot of problems. However, if you follow the method I'm about to show you, we can probably turn something that's difficult for you into guaranteed points on the test because really it's just about kind of following a procedure and going about it slowly. Okay, so uh, to start off, we're just going to jump right in. We've got three different types of naming when it comes to naming inorganic compounds. You have uh, type 1, which I like to call type none, and you'll see why in a second. Type 2, which I put these little Roman numerals because that kind of reminds me that I need to use those when I have type 2. And type 3, which I call type tri. Again, because I'm going to use prefixes like di, tri, and tetra, and things like that to do that naming. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and show you the formula or the template for naming each one of these compounds. Okay. So when you have type 1 or none, that involves a group 1 or 2 metal. So up here on our periodic table, that means we're dealing with um, anything in this, these two, this first uh, group right here. So hydrogen, lithium, sodium, beryllium, magnesium, any of these. Now we know that these are 1 plus and 2 plus charged. And all of these um, compounds are going to be between uh, a metal here and these two groups. And then a non-metal over here in this in this um, in the P block. Okay. Um, so let's do a quick example or show the template actually. We have the cation name. We have space and then we put the anion and we end it with the ending ide. Okay? So for example, so this is clear, something like NaCl would be sodium, and that's the cation name, the positively charged um, species that we're dealing with, so sodium, positive, plus one, sodium chloride. That's all. That's it. That's how um, easy it is when it's type one. And that's why I call it type none, because there's nothing you have to do. And the idea there is that Anything that's in group one or two, you know the charge. It's plus one, plus two. So therefore, you don't have to indicate to whoever's reading the name that there's anything else going on. It's just one, two. Okay, let's go ahead and do type two, which involves a transition metal. This is where we're going to have the cation name again. So I'm just going to put a space for that name. Okay, then you're going to have Roman numerals without a space. Okay, so they're going to be right on that name. Then you have a space and the anion name that you're going to end in ide again. Okay. Okay, so an example of this would be something um, like, let's see, uh, copper oxide, okay? Now to do this name, I have to consider what the charge on copper is because it's a type two naming. And here I see type two copper. What this means is that we do not know the charge on copper. Copper can take different oxidation states. That's why it has different colors. It can form hydroxides and things like that. Um, but essentially, we have to recognize that copper doesn't have a distinct charge, so we have to indicate it to whoever's reading the name what it is. Well, if it's CuO, I know that oxygen has a charge of 2 minus, right? Because it always does, well, when you're dealing with this type of naming. So that's 2 minus, right? Let's go ahead and put these in now. If oxygen has a charge of 2 minus, and there's only one copper here, then this copper must therefore have a charge of two plus, right? Because it's got to balance out to zero. So that gives us copper two oxide. That two means that copper is plus two, has a two plus charge. That's all it means. It doesn't mean that there are two coppers. It just means that it has a two plus charge. Okay, we'll do some more examples of that. Um, let's go ahead and move on to type three. All right, type tri would be something like um, carbon dioxide, okay? And this is where you're gonna have name, and then prefix, and then name with I-D-E as the ending, okay? So let's go ahead and just do um, CO, right? And you guys have all heard of this. I have copper, that's my first name, okay? Have I been saying copper this whole time? Carbon, <laughs> carbon monoxide, right? So we have carbon monoxide, that's the first atom. Let's go ahead and put carbon 
monoxide. Mono is the prefix for one. There's only one oxygen there, therefore it's carbon monoxide. Okay, that's all. Now you know it's type tri when you have to deal with two elements that are both in this group. Carbon and oxygen are both here. Okay, so to refresh this real quick. Type one or the first type, type none. We don't have to use any Roman numerals, any prefix, anything. That's why it's type none. Okay, and that's when you're dealing with something from here with something from here. Okay, then when you have type two, you don't know the charge. So you gotta use the Roman numerals. Something from here with something from here. Type tri, you know their charges. However, you're dealing with metal or two non-metals bonding together. So the charges are changing. The oxidation states are changing, and that's a whole other topic. But that means you're dealing with something from here with something from here. Carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, something of that sort. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, just summarize this right here. The first thing you're going to do is you identify the type you're dealing with. It's not that important that you know that copper oxide is type 2 naming. That's, that's not really what I mean by that. What I mean by that is just understand, am I going to use Roman numerals or not? Am I going to use prefixes or not? Follow the template, and that's using the space and the eyed, okay, the ending and how that's going to work out for you. And then go back and forth between the name and the formula. If you can get the name from the formula, you're good. Or you can get the formula from the name. All right? Let's go ahead and do um, a couple examples. 